Okay, so this is Ringwalk Media in association with Wellice Therapy, Still Hub Management and Barclay Carter Racing. Well, here we are. It's uh, a Wasserman fight week and an unusual character, <laughs> Jason Quickly. How are you, sir? I'm all good. Good to see you again. Good to see you in your side of the water this time. Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah, you've been on your travels, mate. And uh, nice. What are you doing here? Well, I'm here over with uh, Ladbrokes this time. Uh, I'm the boxing ambassador for Ladbrokes, so I'm over here to, to keep an eye on the fights. And, uh, Jesus, what could go wrong? And see how, uh, in case, you know, I might have to jump on myself on some stage, but over as well with uh, Channel 5 to do the commentary on the night, so we're looking forward to that as well. So we've got to listen to your dulcet tones all night on Friday night. Make sure you can get the subtitles in under it. <laughs> well, i tell you what, mate, it's been a little while since we've seen you, but um, last time out, of course, uh, Madison Square Garden's headliner. I mean, what an absolute occasion, mate. Yeah, it was, um, you know, I think it's going to be coming up to a year now. At the end of Two the weeks' summer. time. Yeah, there you go. You know better than me, lad. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be coming up to a year now since that fight. And, um, yeah, look, it was a fantastic one to, to tick off the list. You know, headline of Madison Square Garden. Um, having a great fight, you know, as well with Edgar Blanc. You know, I put in the performance that I could. Outcome didn't come my way, but... That's the name of this game that we're in. Um, you know, I left no stone on third and gave it absolutely everything I got. And yeah, Berlanga could be in line now to fight Canelo, and it'd be be very interesting to see how that one goes. If he beats Canelo, I'm definitely coming back. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you you had your you was just telling me off camera you had your debut on the Canelo undercard in Vegas. Yeah, that <laughs> that's mad, isn't it? Like um, you're talking a long time ago. <laughs> I don't I don't want to say how long ago. Um. But yeah, MGM Grand Las Vegas, Madison Square, or MGM Grand Las Vegas, um, we were the probably one of the very first fights on the undercard of Canelo Lara, and um, yeah, what I, I remember the weigh-in probably because there was a serious crowd at it, like, and the weigh-in was just massive, and then I went to the fight. And obviously, it was huge then as well. So, no, it was, uh, yeah, good times, definitely. Like. You've had some good times in your career, mate, haven't you? Well, listen, let's talk a little bit about fight week here. Um, I mean, Macaulay McGowan and Barrow going for the European title. I mean, this is stuff of dreams from Macaulay's side. Uh, I mean, what a great great headline. Yeah, fantastic. You know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great fight because exactly the way the media is seeing it. It's Macaulay's. This is this is his dream. This like there's no pressure on him whatsoever. He's going in here, and this is his opportunity. Everybody probably has him as an underdog going in here, so the pressure's on the uh, the opponent's side, and it's going to make for a very interesting fight because McGowan's got to really take advantage of that. You know, take advantage of coming in here, but knowing that he's got a purpose, knowing that. This is his opportunity of a lifetime here now. He lifts this European title. God knows where that can take him. But, as we know, the the opposition side is... is I don't want to pronounce his name in case I... Barrow. Barrow. Barrow, there you go. So, uh, yeah, look, Barrow's got to come in there. He's got to show why he's a champion, take this title, and move on then into to bigger and better things. Well, he's done quite well in his career. He's had a couple of titles to his name, but he's only had this title for since March, I think. So, he's his first defence, and you know, you know what first defences are like. They can be a little bit wobbly sometimes, especially when you're going to be in the cauldron that is Bolton. Yeah, it's um, the defence of a title is where you really become the champion. You know, people can go and win titles, but when you defend your title, that's that's a real sign of a champion. You know, you go in there, you won it. Um, sometimes the pressure isn't on you whenever you're winning titles and you might be the underdog and you come in and upset the odds. But then it goes to you are the champion. It's a whole different mindset going into fight week, going into the fight as the champion. But it depends on the type of person you are. Some people realize, yes, I'm the champion. I deserve this. This is where I'm meant to be. And they go to an absolute another level. Other fighters sometimes take the pressure of it on board and it weighs them down and maybe slacks their performance. So we'll soon see what uh, what type of mindset Barrow has. Well, listen, there's another fight on the card. Chloe Watson, one of Ricky Hatton's fighters. Um, she's having a warm-up fight because she's not fought since last year when she won the European title. She was due to fight Maisie Rose Courtney, which I think now is going to be pushed till September. But Chloe's got a, a tough opponent and she's looking like she's the real deal, Chloe. 
definitely, you know, obviously I was over in the gym with uh, Ricky and Brett and all the lads at the time. And I've seen Chloe in there, you know, she is, she would be a similar engine to Ricky. You know, she's always in the front foot. She's always going. She always has that. You can see his style in her. Yeah, definitely, without a doubt. And I think that what makes a great team up there. Um, Maisie. She she had a few words to say recently. I think she called her a shit house. Was the exact words. Um, and it's going to be very interesting because Chloe's opponent was Maisie's opponent on the Kitty Taylor undercard. Well, I was going to bring that back. So Jasmina Zapakosna has got to fight Macy, but Jasmina just fought last week, wiped her opponent out, and I tell you what, Macy's got a tough fight there. Yeah, I didn't know she fought last week, but I, I knew that um, I knew that she had fought. Maisie uh, on the Katie undercard. Don't know how long ago that is. That's was it it's all okay. madness. It's, it's yeah, yeah. Everyone's, everyone's fighting everybody. Everything's just flying by. But it's going to be a great um, styles make fights. Don't get me wrong. But it's going to be a great one for the fans and the public to look at and be like, well, how did they get on against the same opponent? You know. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, I think that Chloe really needs to go in there. They'll put on a show and and put on a great performance and really stick it to her future opposition and say, "I'm not a shit house and I'm coming for you." I think she's already done that because she replayed part of the re- part of the interview I did with Eddie Earn, who said, "You've you've got to be good to fight Chloe Watson." So there's been a bit of toing and froing on there. Well, listen. Not only are you still boxing, because you're not retired, you said you might have, uh, you never know, there might be another call coming your way, but you do look after some boxers, don't you? No, 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 <laughs> no, I'm not even going to ask you, because I know you won't tell me, but um, you look after a couple of boxers as well, um, and you've got a couple of lads coming out soon. Tell me about who you've got and what's going on. Yeah, so we're really, we're really going strong now at the minute. Um, we have uh, Roberto Diaz, former Golden Boy um, matchmaker, and one of my great friends in boxing you know he's part of the team now in sheer sports he's become the president of sheer sports and we're going to start making a lot of head waves now in the in the next couple of months in the next year we have got james mcgivern who is fighting now on the queensbury card in the end of june belfast yeah yep that's correct in the ssc arena he's going to be defending his uh, celtic title against uh, omar rashid so that's going to be a great fight for him he wins his title and, you know, or he defends his title. Like I said earlier, you know, becoming a champion is great. Defending it means you're a solid, you're a real champion. So well, the SSE arena rocks as well on a fight night, doesn't it? 100%. You know, it's going to, and James is from Belfast, it's going to have a good crowd in there. It's going to be a great opportunity for him. And, you know, we have been in talks with Queensbury as well. And there could be a contract there for James then after this fight um, and moving forward into his career. We have Tyler Jolly as well, a Commonwealth medalist from Scotland. Massive punch. You're going to be some news on him shortly as well coming out. Um, hopefully get him back fighting in Scotland very soon. Big things to come from Tyler. You know, he's going to be snapped up very quick by uh, some of the big promoters out there. And then we've got Cahill McLaughlin, a local lad for me. Back at home in uh, Donegal, he'll not like saying that because he's just across the border in Tyrone. But, you know, he fights for a full boxing club and he's just turned professional now. And he's making his pro debut on the June, or sorry, the August 3rd card in uh, Belfast as well on the Conlon Show Tyrone Mechanic card. So it's a great debut for him. Um, He's turned professional is a big thing for a fighter, making his debut on a good card and on a good platform so uh, yeah it's exciting times and hopefully now in the next couple of months as well we'll have a few more cider fighters on our uh, on our roster you do know you're boxing and it's nice to see you bringing up some of the young talent from from ireland and northern ireland yeah and that's you know something that i really want to do because sometimes up in donegal where i'm from people can be you know we can be forgot about up there and you know the kids don't really see professional boxing that was one of the main reasons why i wanted to have that professional show we had in in uh, in Donegal last year. You know, it really showed the kids, and the I went around every boxing gym that reached back out to me. I reached out to all the amateur boxing gyms. I'll come around, you know, give out a few tickets to the kids, get them ready to come to the show, and let them see. Because as a kid, when you go to see these shows, these are memories that they're going to have forever, and these are the wee things that could just trigger them and be like, "That's what I want to do." 
and it's there on their doorstep they can see it they can believe it they they can feel it right in front of them and i think that's where dreams can be made you know so if we could turn one kid's uh, dream into reality that would be something special for me as a uh, manager promoter what what we're stepping into well listen i can't let you go without asking you what is up your sleeve <laughs> there must be something are you just you see all this saudi money coming through i mean is that a little temptation for you to step in and have one more go yeah you know look I'm always in the gym. I'm always staying ready. Do you know what I mean? So I think that that kind of shows you. Ready-ish. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm not, not on fighting weight or anything, but <laughs> I'm staying ready. <laughs> but, you know, look. I still think you've got one more bigger than you. Yeah, yeah. I believe so. Um, I'm very happy. I'm very content in life now at the minute. You know, I'm a married man now. And, Never. And, uh, and, and, and happy out, like, you know. Um, but definitely, you know, there, there's definitely a wee itch or a wee bug there that, you know, if the, if the right fight came along and if the if it excited me and got me up for it, then 100%, you know, we would, we would give it a lash. But is there, is there a venue you haven't fought in yet that is on your bucket list that you would go, you know what, yeah, go on then? Ooh. Jeez. You've done a lot. You've done the Vegas. You've done the Madison Square yeah, Gardens. Th- those would be the ones that you know. But I'm thinking maybe Ireland, the three arena, would be unbelievable. You know, if we got because obviously it's not, it's not Madison Square Garden. It's not the MGM Grand, the T-Mobile Arena. Like those are the big ones. I think that everybody and I'm very fortunate to be able to take them off the list and experience them in my career. So yeah, definitely, you know, if a, if a big one came above here, like say Katie Taylor was fighting back at home or, you know, we, we get another fight, we get a good one and we set up a world title fight again then and bring it back home, I think that would be something special for sure. That was the longest swerve in history. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I'm looking forward to your Labrooks commentary uh, this week. It's going to be good to hear what you have to say about the fights. Um, Wasserman back in action in the UK. It's nice to see him because they always have good fight nights, don't they? Yeah, you know, Wasserman have always, um, they've always been there, thereabouts, and they're always putting on good fights. They're, they're signing some good fighters, and, you know, it would here it'll be great to get some good uh, good Irish talent on their on their records as well there's a subtle hint Mr. <laughs> Mr. Caller if you're watching well listen Jason as always it's really good to speak to you I hope your lads do well especially the lads on the debuts as well and uh, I've got a funny feeling we might be seeing you next week as well lovely stuff appreciate it lad thank you